Hi everyone, my name is Ray and welcome to my channel. So, breatharian might sound a little bit strange to some of you. You might feel that it's impossible or imagine that very few people in the world can actually do this and they have to be like a super spiritual gurus or something like that. I understand the skepticism. We're highly conditioned in our society to believe that we need a certain amount of food for survival. I thought so too at some point, but Breatharianism is something that has been profoundly beneficial in my life. In this video, I'm going to share with you some of the top benefits that I've learned and what I think is the best for everyone to understand. But before I go into it, if you want to dive deeper into the Breatharian lifestyle, I've made an hour-long video covering the basic answers to most of the questions that I got from you, my viewers. It's called something Breatharian FAQs and it has two parts to it. So let's begin. So what are the main benefits which also become the motivation for lots of people in going into a breatharian initiation or a breatharian workshop? Number one, continuous detox. And now what does that mean? What I actually mean is that the body always has toxins to deal with. There's nothing we can do about it. It doesn't matter how healthy you eat. It doesn't matter because we all have stress in our life. We all have toxins that come from medicine that we took when we were four years old, from antibiotics, from, from, from everything. It's from relationship, it's from the air itself, uh, it's from living in a city, it's from breathing uh, carbon dioxide emissions. There are many, many, many ways for toxins to come into our system and then they sit inside the body. Now a lot of us, it's very common these days that people go through a cleansing process once in a while. So they're doing dry fast, water fast, intermittent fasting, some of them doing our, our, our uh, ju juice fast and stuff like that. The breatharian never needs to do that anymore. After the initiation, which is the hardest part physically, then you're in a continuous detox state. When you do eat or drink, it's very, very mildly and in small quantities, and then the body never reaches that state that it doesn't have the time or and requires the effort to clean itself. In other words, if each person has a certain amount of calories, that above that, the body will never get to the cleansing part, and below that, the body always has the time to clean itself, because that's exactly how the digestive system works and exactly how the body heals itself by the fact that it doesn't need to take the energy into the digestion, it knows that right now it's healing itself. That's why, by the way, a lot of people in the first two days of any type of detox, they feel very, very bad, but on the third day, they start feeling great because the body went through the first transition and the first deeper detox. So the first thing is a continuous detox. In other words, your body is always clean and that also means that you're, you can be pretty much disease free because most of the, the, uh, the, he the healing that occurs during a detox process is what really prevents us from being sick. So you're putting yourself in the best ultimate position for being healthy. You're doing the best for your health, in other words. Number two, clarity. Senses open up and spiritual clarity, okay? What I'm talking about is the fact that right now, we know that the body has a certain amount of energy. And because you're not using that energy for the digestive system, which takes about 25% of the energy of the whole body, now that energy can be used elsewhere. So some people get a lot of ideas because you're becoming more like, a, it's more like a meditative state that you're, you're, you're working with on a day-to-day -day basis. You're no longer bothered by food all the time. You don't have a definition of breakfast and lunch and dinner. So you have a lot more clarity. A lot of my students, for example, are people who are mental, you know, because you're, you're connected with me because I'm a mental person. I like to analyze and understand scientific things before we use them in a practical way in our spirituality or for our personal development. So this clarity really helps. It helps you solve things, it helps you write new ideas, it helps you innovate, it helps you become more creative. That's why a lot of them become artists afterwards. I became an artist after I became a breatharian and before that I had no touch in it whatsoever. And today I do really cool stuff. Number three, time and increased productivity. And this is my personal favorite. Even though, you know, it's less about the spirituality in this, it's more about the practicality. In other words, when you're not having breakfast and lunch and dinner, and even if you eat something small, it's not, you know, you won't need that, the same type of preparation. You don't have number twos in the toilet 
and you don't have a preparation, you don't wash the dishes afterwards, there's so much time that is being cleared out of your schedule, not to talk about the money of spending with breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and shopping, and all these type of things. In addition to that, because the digestive system is the heaviest system in the, in the body, right now you need less sleep than ever before. So I used to sleep right after my initiation four, four and a half hours. Today I have to admit that I'm sleeping five and a half hours and with my baby being born it's even harder because I don't get consecutive sleep. So time and increased productivity is definitely one of my favorite benefits. The challenges of personal development. Now I know a lot of people wouldn't put this as a benefit but challenges are what makes us grow. And when you do become a breatharian, there are certain challenges in the beginning, there's the most amount of challenges, which are basically social and yourself. You are stepping out of your old programs and you're getting into a high frequency, which actually makes you deal with a lot of things that you didn't want to deal with, a lot of fears. For example, you might come home and because you have such a high frequency of acceptance now, you might see that your relationship is not really what you want in your life or that you have changed in some way. Or you will see that your job is not as fulfilling as you want it to be. And because you're in a high degree of acceptance, but you also, it's very clear to you that you are keeping those things in your life because you're afraid of being alone, you're afraid of not having money, you're afraid anything else, then that high degree of acceptance will actually force you to make a change. So there are many, many challenges that have to do with your personal development. I would actually define it as taking about 10 years worth of karma and lesson and squeezing it into a few months. So even if your spiritual ego is very developed and you think, oh, I'm already in a very, very good place in my life, you probably recognize that if, if you said the same thing two years ago and you look at the struggles and the things you've learned in the last two years, you probably understand that there's much more for you to grow and to mature spiritually or personally uh, than ever before. In other words, the peak that you thought that you're climbing on and reach is now you just, you can now see that it's just one peak in front of many, many others. So those challenges actually build up personality and those challenges are the reason that I think most of us came to planet Earth anyway. If we wanted a no challenge heaven type lifestyle, we wouldn't stand in line to come to this dark, I would say, darker than ever place uh, from all the options that we, had, we probably had. And trust me, my friends, we stood in line for this show, the show that is already beginning. So, next. The next one is healing powers. Now, healing powers divides into two. There's the personal healing for yourself because you're toxin-free and now your system is working. Um, yeah, you can just say that your system is, is cleansed, sort of like a car that has just been treated. So you're, you're defaulting back to your adolescent life. Like a kid, they can actually take just a few bites of something and the body knows how to use it in the best absolute way, so now your body does the same thing. A lot of people that go over 40 start losing a lot of weight after the breatharian process until the body goes back to their ideal weight. So that's the personal healing. The second is the healing for others. When your system works better, your heart works better, your connection to the divine and the pranic energy itself makes it so that you can heal better. Now, every human being on planet Earth is born with healing abilities. It's all about how we practice them. The hands are the receptors. The hands have, have, have the most amount of receptors. That's why when we take energy, when we give energy, when we hug people, everything goes by the hands. We feel everything. So if you're, you've ever learned Reiki or any type of other type of healing, you will notice after the breather initiation that you have increased connection. You can actually create balls of energy with your hands and feel them and move them around from person to person. So again, I'm not a personal healer. I work in the, in the reverse way. In other words, I know how to avoid any type of sickness. So I don't really deal with healing much. But I've noticed that when I do want to heal my partner, my friends or anything like that, I can use my hands and they're much more powerful than they ever were before. The next benefit is increased connection to nature and oneness. Now, when you do the initiation and you start living this lifestyle, and I'm talking about post the first two, three months. So after the first two, two three months that most people have that, that's the stage of, of struggling and adaptation and integration. And if you drop there, you go back to how you were. And if you continue from there, everything starts opening up even more. So you have an increased connection to nature. You actually notice now that your body reacts differently and you have much more energy in nature than before. The breath itself, if you're breathing in your house or outside or next to a tree, you now notice that everything has changed and you're actually taking things or taking energy 
from everything that's around you, from a tree, from a baby, from your satisfaction, from the clouds, from the rain. It's, it's quite amazing to have this deeper connection to nature, which all human beings have, but now you, you feel it much more profoundly than before. The next benefit is you have no emotional dependency on food. So you're actually getting freedom from food addiction and increased awareness. In other words, if you do choose to eat, when you do choose to drink, it's no longer because your body is telling you right now, I'm hungry, I gotta get it. You don't get really agitated anymore from anything like that. You kind of forget about the sensation of hunger. So with that comes an increased awareness. In other words, now you're enjoying food, so you don't have to eat quickly. So you don't have to eat things that are like filling your stomach, like, like rice or like bread. So you only eat food that you actually enjoy. You don't have to have large quantities of it. It can be something small, it can be huge if that's what you like. Like, you kind of play around with it and that's freedom and I think that as we mature spiritually we understand that we're just looking for we're, we're human beings that are stuck in different prisons some of them of our own making and what we want is to expand our consciousness to be free of everything be, to be free of any fear that we have to free, be free of any dependency that includes food that includes sleep that includes sometimes even the physical body and everything like that so it gives you that type of freedom. And I think, you know, when I interview a lot of my, my, my followers and people that are coming to the workshop, that's one of the main benefits that they enjoy, that they understand that they would like to play with. So there's other benefits as well, but I think these are the collection that when I interview people after the processes, this is what they said that they, they like the most about the lifestyle. And of course, if you're interested in trying out breatharianism, I'd highly recommend doing it in a group setting. It's incredibly helpful to have the support of a guide and other like-minded people that are doing it with you. It's like having a, a personal training to get much better results in the gym than actually trying to exercise physically at home, which everybody tries and fails. You can also check out my retreats, which I host all over the world. The link to my website is below the description, it's raymaor.com. And if you've had any experience with breatharianism and have or have any question that you like to ask, just please leave a comment below, if it's on Facebook, if it's on YouTube. As always, thank you very much for watching my channel. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. Namaste my friends, and I will see you in my next video.